In this video, we're going to be discussing finding the arc length of a parametric curve. So let's first recall what the arc length formula was for some curve y equals f of x. So for y equals f of x with f prime continuous, we had found that the arc length was equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So our goal is now to get a parametric form of this arc length formula using our parametric form of the derivative. So let's suppose the curve C, some parametric curve, is described by x equals f of t and y equals g of t, where t ranges between alpha and beta, where dx dt is positive. Okay. Assuming that the derivative is positive, we'll imply that our curve is being traced out just once from left to right as t is increasing from alpha to beta. Also note that we will have um, f of alpha is equal to our a and f of beta is equal to b when we need to convert between x limits and some t limits. Okay. So let's start with what we know for our arc length formula. So we know the arc length would be, in terms of the x bounds, an integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Okay, so notice that this is the square root of 1 plus dy dx, okay, squared dx. So I need to replace dy dx with my parametric form of the derivative. So I'm going to have this integral of the square root of 1 plus dy dt over dx dt. Okay, that's what dy dx is equal to in terms of our parametric form. This is squared, and instead of writing dx, I'm going to write dx as dx dt times dt. Okay, so now I have this integral that's actually going to be with respect to dt, and so I'll convert this to my t limits. Okay, so our next step is going to simplify this so we can get a nice um, formula, simplified formula here for the parametric form of the arc length. So notice that since dx dt is positive, the square root of dx dt squared will be equal to just dx dt. We know that in general, the square root of something squared equals the absolute value, okay? Here, our absolute value of dx dt would be just dx dt because dx dt is always positive. So the idea is I can now pull dx dt squared under the square root. So by writing dx dt as the square root of dx dt squared, I'm going to have a square root here of dx dt squared times 1 plus dy dt squared over dx dt squared. And we see how this is going to simplify. And then I have just dt on the outside. So multiplying dx dt squared through these parentheses, the dx dt squared will cancel in that second term, and we'll be left with the following. We'll have this integral from alpha to beta of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So we get this nice simplified form for the parametric um, form of our arc length formula. Okay, so we have this, and again this is describing the length of curve C. Um, for C defined by x equals f of t, y equals g of t, t between alpha and beta, f prime and g prime both continuous over our interval, okay, and c traversed just once, okay, um, over the interval. 
as t increases, let's say, from a to b, alpha to beta. Okay. So we want to have our curve um, be traced out just once over the interval. So when we're finding the arc length over the, these parameters, we, we want to just be um, counting the curve once. We don't want to be um, including parameters here that would be going back and forth over the curve multiple times. So we always want to make sure that the interval we're using is tracing out our curve just once when we go ahead and find the um, arc length. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this formula in the following example. Here we're interested in finding the total length of the asteroid curve. We've actually seen this type of curve in an earlier example. Um, x equals cosine cubed and y equals sine cubed, which is traced out once on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. An earlier example that we had um, gave us x is sine cubed and y is cosine cubed. So this is the reverse, but it's still going to be this shape that we saw before. It's just traced out in the opposite direction. So to help us see how this is being traced out, we could just make a table of values just to help us see what's going on. And I'll plug in some values of theta that are easy to work with between 0 and 2 pi. So we could do 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so notice that when theta is 0, we would have the point 1, 0. Okay, when theta is pi over 2, we're going to have 0, 1. At pi, negative 1, 0. At 3 pi over 2, 0, negative 1. And at 2 pi, 1, 0. Again, I'm plugging theta in here into my um, parametric equations for x and y. So 1, 0 is right here, so this is theta equals 0. Um, negative 1, 0 is occurring, oops, I missed 0, 1 here. 0, 1 is up here at the top. This is theta equals pi over 2, okay? Negative 1, 0 is over here. This is theta equals pi. Um, 0, negative 1 will be down here. Theta equals 3 pi over 2, okay? So it's being traced out in this counterclockwise um, here direction. Okay, so let's look at applying our arc length formula to this equation. So we're going to need L is equal to an integral from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, we're actually given it's traced out just once over that interval. Um, of our square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared. So my dx d theta is 3 cosine squared theta times negative sine theta. So I'll have that part squared plus my dy d theta, which will be 3 sine squared theta times cosine theta squared d theta. Okay. So next I'm going to have to multiply um, this out and look for maybe adding some like terms. So I've got 0 to 2 pi. Maybe I'll look for some other kinds of simplification I could do. So notice I'm going to have 9 cosine to the fourth theta sine squared theta plus 9 sine to the fourth theta cosine squared theta d theta. Okay. So what we want to do here is um, not add things together because I do have different kinds of terms here. I have a cosine to the fourth sine squared and a sine to the fourth cosine squared. But notice what's common to each of these so I can factor something out. So notice I can factor out a 9 cosine squared from each. Okay, I can also factor out a sine squared for each. So I'm going to have 9 cosine squared theta sine squared theta. Okay, which will be then multiplied times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Okay, so here we get to make use of one of our identities. Remember that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So we're going to be able to simplify this quite a bit. I'm just going to have 1 here times this 9 cosine squared sine squared theta. Okay, so we have 0 to 2 pi. The square root of just 9 cosine squared 
theta sine squared theta. So here we have to be a little bit careful, okay? Because this quantity that's inside the square root, if I were to just take the square root of each piece, okay? Remember the square root of nine cosine squared theta sine squared theta would be equal to the absolute value of the square root of three cosine theta sine theta, okay? And over the interval between zero to two pi, this quantity would sometimes be positive and sometimes be negative, right? So we would get just three cosine theta sine theta in two quadrants, either where both cosine and sine were positive or where both were negative so that their product would be positive. And we would get negative three cosine theta sine theta for angles in the um, second and fourth quadrants, okay, where one of them would be positive and one would be negative. So instead of writing this integral as the sum of four separate pieces, it's easier to use some symmetry. We know that between zero and pi over two, that would be this quadrant here, cosine and sine are both positive, and we have some nice symmetry here for the, the curve that we're working with. So we could write this as four times the integral from zero to pi over two of three cosine theta sine theta d theta, okay? So the square root will be equal to just positive three cosine theta sine theta because between zero and pi over two, both cosine and sine are positive, okay? So now we can look at using an integration technique. I will wanna use substitution here. So we can let u be equal to sine theta so du is cosine theta d theta. So we're gonna have three u du, okay? We'll have to change to our u limits. So when theta equals zero, u will equal zero, okay? Because sine of zero is zero. When theta is pi over two, u is gonna equal one, since sine of pi over two is equal to one. So we'll have this integral from zero to one. So I'm gonna have 12 u squared over two from zero to one, okay? Which will end up giving me just six for the final arc length. So we can say that the arc length of that total asteroid is equal to just six, okay? So anytime you're interested in finding the arc length of a curve, you wanna make sure you're, you're using for a parametric curve, our parametric um, version of the um, arc length formula. Make sure your curve is being traced out just once, and then be careful in terms of doing the algebra and your integration techniques. Let me know if you have any questions.